What's going on smart people? Sorry for the really crappy lighting today. It's dark now. I already recorded a video before and then I realized that I already made that video before so I had to come up with something different. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how I'm going to be preparing for this qualifying exam that is less than, well I guess it's about a month away. Short video because I kind of already ate up my time earlier. Uh, this qualifying exam is an eight hour test that's going to test me on classical mechanics, electricity and magnetism, quantum mechanics and I think special relativity, as well as thermal and statistical physics. Uh, NMSU was nice enough to give us a bunch of previous qualifying exams to prepare us with, so that's the main way that I'm going to be studying. As you can see here, it has it filed by you know, the different years, click on 2013, and it has different exams for classical mechanics, e and M. I assume MP means modern physics and thermodynamics, Thermodi thermo thermodynamics, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the modern physics one just to give you a little bit of a taste. I'm not sure how okay it is for me to be showing these kinds of tests online. So one from five years ago is probably my best bet. So I'll just show you this, just a little taste. If you're more curious, you can do a quick Google search of qualifying exams for physics. The first one that I came across was one from Columbia University. It has all the different sections and you can see kind of what level, I mean that's a great school, so you can see, I don't think that they would be more difficult than at a school like that. So you could see, I guess, maybe what an upper bound looks like. I don't know, maybe that's the wrong way of thinking about it. Who knows, I don't really care. It's undergraduate physics for the most part anyways, meaning the difficulty should be what everyone has learned in previous years. Initially, I was kind of worried about that because since it's on uh, electricity and magnetism and thermodynamics, I haven't had those since undergrad, so I wasn't sure if it was going to be at the graduate level, which was kind of scary for me. Luckily, no, it's all undergraduate related. If we look at this quantum mechanics one, do two of the following three problems, each on a separate page or pages, and write your name on every page you turn in. A tritium atom with one proton, two neutrons, and its nucleus decays whose nucleus contains two protons and one neutron, the transformation can be considered as instantaneous, blah, blah, blah. What is the probability that the newly created H3 atom will be in its ground state? So we got just some basic quantum mechanics calculating probability that it'll be in a ground state. Nothing too crazy there. A particle of mass M moves non-relativistically, so that's always nice, uh, in three-dimensional potential, blah, 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 for the raising and lowering for the raising and lowering operators, uh, show the three relations. So it's doing commutation relation for the raising and lowering operators for basically a harmonic oscillator potential. Another pretty, so, so far that actually looks really, not too bad, does it? It looks kind of easy. Suppose you have two identical, well, I guess it depends on what score you need, which I don't actually know. Uh, suppose you have two identical non-interacting spin one-half particles in a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator potential of angular frequency omega, let phi sub n. So this is this looks like all quantum mechanics. I expected if it's uh if it's um oh I guess it is quantum. I think the label said MP, so I thought it might have like special relativity on it, but maybe that's the next one. Um sorry, I totally got sidetracked. Let phi sub n denote a normalized position wave function for the nth harmonic oscillator. This two particle system is an energy eigenstate with this eigenvalue. Uh, write down all possible normalized wave functions as a product of spatial and spin parts. Yeah, so these three questions seem extremely fair with quantum. They actually seem downright kind of easy. Um, the harmonic oscillator, I mean, you kind of beat it to a pulp in grad school and undergrad. This is just a basic probability where you only have to consider the radial part of a wave function. And then this, yes, it's a product of spatial and spin parts of the wave function but it seems like you have identical non-interacting spin one half, so it's a little bit, so you know that they're fermions, so the wave functions should be anti-symmetric, which means they could be anti-symmetric in either the spin or the spatial part of the wave function. So it looks like that one's adding a little bit more of a complication to it, but not really if you know what fermions are. Uh, so at first glance, that doesn't look too bad. I'll probably get started on studying for this stuff tomorrow. Um, I'll I'm not going to leave links to the NMSU ones. I'm not comfortable doing that. I don't know if I'm technically allowed to, but I will leave links to the Columbia one. How about that?
I don't think that they'll get mad at me because there's no way that they know who I am. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get started on this tomorrow. Hope everyone's having a good day. Let me know in the comment section what you think of these problems at first glance. And I'll see you guys there.